Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. So, you know, most of the stuff I put on here is car videos, but I have quite a few other hobbies. And uh, one of the ones I wanted to share something about is 3D printing, uh, mainly because I'm starting to use it more and more for car parts, and I want to incorporate it into my channel. But one of the things I've been working on this week to do with 3D printing, I couldn't find anything on the web on how to do it, at least not thorough enough to understand it. So I just started jumping into it and trying to figure it out myself, and, and here's what the topic is. So I have three different printers in my house, and two of them run off of Raspberry Pis with Clipper. Uh, if you're familiar with these, you usually run a web interface, uh, like Mainsail or Fluid or Octopi, that allows you to run the 3D printer from your home network through a web browser. Now. Um, each one of these particular softwares you can run has different features and little quirks. Um, I've run Octopi on my first one that I built, um, which was a Voron V0. And I built a Voron V2, which you can see behind me somewhere in this clip. Um, and that one's actually running Mainsail. What I wanted to do was upgrade the V0.1 to also run on Mainsail because I really like the interface. In fact, I like it better in Octopi. The problem I'm having is I couldn't figure out how to do that at first, so um, I did figure it out. So this is Mainsail, and uh, I've got this thing configured right now uh, to have multiple printers. So I've got two printers. I've got my V0.2, which is what I'm going to upgrade my V0.1 to a 0.2, and I've got my 2.4. And here you can see my dashboard for the 2.4, and if I click up here I can switch to the V0.2, and it switches to the other printer. now. Currently, I haven't put that new control board in the other printer, um, so it doesn't show anything. That old printer, which I'm about to upgrade, is still running on Octopi, and the interface looks like this. It's a little bit different. Um, it's all right, but I definitely like this better. So what I'm going to show you is how I got both of them to run on mainsail and able to switch back and forth. And the first step is actually to um, properly format the uh, SD card you're going to use to actually run your Raspberry Pi. So let's let's go ahead and do that. And the first thing I need to do is um, I'm actually going to disconnect this uh, board that's on the network. I have it sitting on my desk right now. It's plugged into USB, and uh, I'm running a uh, Big Tree Tech Manta 4P with a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 on it. And uh, the SD card I got in here, I'm going to show you how I loaded that with the proper information to run two, two Raspberry Pis with mainsail on them without having conflicts. So let's see. Uh, let me grab this from my desk. We have my SD card. This one's just a spare one. I'll put this in my SD card reader. And I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Make sure I have the correct one. Huh. This is not quite the correct card. Let me pull a different one. I don't want to overwrite what I have on there already. So I'm just putting a different SD card in. Yep, this is it. Okay. So right now I'm going to clean this off. Uh, we'll go ahead and just delete this firmware. I was using that to flash the the uh, control board with the correct firmware. Anyways, I got a blank card. So then I'm going to go find my Raspberry Pi imager. Um, you can download this from raspberrypi.com or .org, I think it is. You know, you go here, you choose your OS, you go uh, other specific purpose OS. We'll go 3D printing, We'll go to mainsail. We'll use 64-bit. We're going to choose our storage device. We're going to go down to settings. Um, here's the real important part. Um, you want to enable SSH, right? You want to go ahead and set your username for your password. You want to configure your wireless network. But up here, this is the important part. By default, um, when you load mainsail on here, it's going to want to set its host name to mainsailos.local. And if you have two Raspberry Pis that both think they're mainsailos.local, when they connect to your wireless network at home, 
they conflict and it causes issues and it 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 seems like when I did it that each of the two different Raspberry Pis would kind of bump each other off the network continuously. So anyways, you want to make sure to set a different name here. So I've set this one to mainsail V02 for version 0.2 Voron essentially. And you go ahead and you hit save and you, you write it. Um, you can go ahead and click through these menus. This is all the same as you would normally do to load Clipper and uh, mainsail. So you let it go through that process. I'm going to go ahead and cut ahead to when this is done and uh, show you how you actually do the actual setup and main sale. Okay, so now that the SD card has basically finished being written with the image of main sale that we're going to use to run the Raspberry Pi, we can take that uh, SD card, stick it in our Raspberry Pi, and let it boot up and uh, set itself up. It, it'll take a while the first time, it always does, because it has to do some, some file creation, uh, and it also has to connect to your network. But uh, let's skip ahead because I've already done that and uh, I was just trying to show you how it's done. I didn't actually rewrite my SD card that's in my controller in my Raspberry Pi. I've still got it running and connected to the network. So once you've done this and assumably it's connected to the network, the first thing I do, um, and your, yours is going to vary on how you do this, right, depending on what kind of router or internet connection you have, is I log into my router. And when I log into my router, I can see all my connected devices. And uh, you can see on here, here, here's what I was trying to point out about changing the name in the settings to something other than Mainsail OS. You can see here where my mouse is. Um, I already have a printer on my network that's communicating. It's on Linux, according to this, uh, that, that named itself Mainsail OS. This is the first one I built that had Mainsail. By default, it thinks that's its host name, right? And here's the IP address for that particular Raspberry Pi. Um, here is the new one, Mainsail V02. Uh, and it's got a different IP address. If they have the same host name, you will have issues. And that was the, the big thing that I didn't see listed anywhere, but that's, that's why you need to change it. So now, as you can see, I've got two different IPs. This is my original mainsail printer on my V2.4, and this is the new V0.2. Um, they're only slightly different. I can go into my web browser, and I can type those in, 1.2.168.50.14040, uh, 144. Hit enter. It's going to take me to my mainsail on my V2.4. So let's uh, make this the maximum size. Um, going to open another window and show you 192.168.50.66. That was the other printer. So you can see I've already done some basic stuff to set up uh, main cell. So you can see it, see there's a difference between the two, right? So if I flip between these two tabs, I've got my V2.4 and my V0.2. Um, now the trick is to basically tell each Raspberry Pi where the other one is located on the network and this will allow me to log into just one main sale window and look at both printers without having to have separate links which can be handy or you could just create new bookmarks it's up to you as long as you did the first part where I said you you rename the local host to something different you should be okay at this point but anyways if we go over to the top right and we go to settings and we scroll down this list of printers we can add a printer and simply all we need to do is put in the IP that it is on the network. So keep in mind I'm on the Voron V2.4 so I want to put in the IP address of the other printer. Uh, and I hit add printer and if everything works out you should get a check mark here saying you added it. Okay, if I can close this window you'll notice you get this new printer icon here and it'll show you the status of the other printer, which I have nothing hooked up to, so it's freaking out. That's why it says unknown. Um, I don't have any sensors or anything hooked up to the control board. It's just kind of trying to figure out what's going on. And also, you get a nice drop down here that lets you switch between the two. Here's the key to this, though. Um, if I switch to V0.2 from the V2.4, where I added the printer, when it switches over, you'll notice I have no way to get back. Um, the printer icon disappeared and there's no uh, button here to drop this menu down. 
what you actually have to do is go in and tell the other Raspberry Pi, uh, the other version of main cell, the location of the first one you were working in. So I go back to settings again, go down to printers, add a printer, and then this time I'm going to add the other printer, which you can see the IP is a little bit different. Um, I'm going to hit add. You can see it added it. So now I only need one link in my browser to main sale and then from there I can switch between the two printers because you can see my printer tab came back up. I go switch to printer, it goes back to the other printer. I can just go back and forth um, and it's that simple. And I think that's that's the way I like it. Um, so I'll be able to manage multiple printers and obviously when you go ahead and you do your Raspberry Pi configuration if you have three, four, five printers. You just need to make sure you give them different host names and you should be okay. And that's pretty much it. That's how you get main sale to run multiple printers on the same web interface. Um, makes it a lot easier, I think. And uh, I like I like the main sale interface. So hopefully this was helpful because it took me some time to figure out. I mean, not too long. It's very simple when you look at the steps, but I spent a lot of time Googling before I said, let's just try some stuff, and this ended up working out. So, uh, again, I hope it's helpful for you, and uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to show you guys how I use these tools on my cars, too, so keep coming back. I hope to have more videos on that soon.